Fine. So uh, I'll talk about utilizing the handheld um, ABG analyzer. All right. So this is the machine. What we have here is the battery slot. Okay. This battery is uh, rechargeable. Okay. So this is how this is how you open the battery. Okay. Then uh, you have to check for the uh, poles that is positive and negative poles and put it accordingly. The battery. Okay, so this is how you put it, <coughs> and you have to match the slot appropriately for the battery. Okay, if you are not putting it in the proper way, suppose you have put it in the wrong way, you will not be able to close the battery slot. So you will have to. If you put it correctly, then the slot will you will be able to close. Okay, so this is how you put the battery. Then we have two more extra batteries. We have two more extra batteries, and this is the USB slot. Okay, over there. So you just have to plug. So you can charge two batteries when you are using the ABG analyzer. You can uh, charge the other batteries, and you can use this. All right. So now coming to the buttons. This is the on button switch on button I have switch on okay so you'll see here two things one is last result and I start cartridge so when you press one you'll be able to see the last result which we have done earlier on okay so now I'll go back I'll go, you can switch on the menu button okay okay right so once you get this screen uh, last result and I start cartridge first and foremost thing to do is you press menu button Press menu button and then you press 1 for the analyzer status. So once you do that, you'll be able to see at the temperature, room temperature, it's mentioned as 24.2 degrees centigrade. You have to operate this uh, analyzer in the range of, in the temperature range of 17 to 30 degrees centigrade. So uh, fortunately for us in Shillong, we can operate uh, this uh, analyzer in uh, at room uh, temperature. And you can see the battery here is showing 7.97 volt. We should make sure that the battery is 8 volt and above to run the sample because if you run the sample when the voltage of the battery is 8 or less, then the while running the sample halfway, the uh, machine will shut down. You won't be able to run the full thing. So first thing is make sure that the battery is 8 volt and above and then before running the sample. So now I'll go back to menu. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> another thing is we have two cartridges here. One is the CG4 cartridge. Basically, it is the arterial blood gas along with lactate levels. Everything is mentioned here, what all values you will get. And the other cartridge is the EG7 cartridge, where you will get the electrolytes as well, along with hemoglobin, hematocrit. Okay, so these two things. Now, the important thing about this uh, about this cartridge you should remember is you should handle it very carefully. Uh, on this side, you can see that there are two slots here. So this is the area where you need to tear the cartridge pouch. You should not tear it from here and take it out from here because you have a sensor over here. If you touch the sensor, then uh, the cartridge will not work anymore. And there is um, calibration fluid also at the center of this. So we should not press. We should not press it like this. You should handle this cartridge carefully. If you do that, then it will get spoiled and you won't be able to use anymore. Okay. And this is the barcode okay for the for the for this particular cartridge so the barcode is the same for the entire box so for this entire blocks the barcode is the same so you can scan either from here or any of these or even this barcode so you can sign but then once you have scanned the barcode for blue you have to run the blue cartridge you cannot you cannot uh, scan the barcode for blue and run for this uh, orange cartridge so orange cartridge once you scan the barcode you have to run only the orange cartridge and once you scan the barcode for the blue you have to run only the blue cartridge okay so i'll be opening the <coughs> and important thing is the storage temperature is we have to if we need to store it in the fridge <coughs> uh, we have to store it between 2 to 8 degrees degree centigrade so the uh, the the life of the cartridge will be up to 6 months you can store it up to 6 months but if you are storing it at room temperature the it will get expired in 2 months so the best thing to do is better to use uh, better to keep at least few pouches in room temperature and the rest of it to keep in the fridge because why if you take <coughs> out the cartridge from the fridge you have to keep it in room temperature for at least 5 to 10 minutes it has to be brought to room temperature then only you can utilize the cartridge okay so now let's run the sample so i have already taken um, 
uh, sample this. I've taken a venous sample. I've wet the syringe with the heparin. I, once you take the heparin, you just need to flush it out. Okay, you just wet the syringe and flush out everything. And then after that, <coughs> you, you have to mix this well. Okay, now let's go to... And heparin, ideally, we should use 500 units per ml to wet the syringe, not to use the 5,000 units per ml. 5,000 units per ml, what will happen is it will interfere with the ABG reading. So if you don't have a 500 units per ml, what you can do is you can dilute the 5,000 units. The one we're having here is a 5,000. This is a 5,000 uh, units per ml. So what you can do is you can take 1 ml from here and dilute with 9 ml normal saline. So you will get a concentration of 500 units per ml. So you can wet the syringe with that okay so once you wet the syringe so now let's go to the testing now to go for the testing you have to power on the button okay now once i've powered on the button now i'll go to two two means to start the cartridge okay so now it's showing here scan or enter operator id so here we will just skip okay skip means i'll press enter Okay, now it's showing me scan or enter patient ID. This one also will just skip because what we'll do is whatever reading we get from the from the patient, we'll copy it from here into a paper and we'll enter the patient details in the paper. So this also will just skip, otherwise it'll take so much time to enter this also. I'll skip, I'll press enter. Now it's asking me to scan cartridge LOT number. Okay, so I have taken this <coughs> cartridge. Okay, so what I will do now, I will scan. So you can see here, it's mentioned the scan button. So this, I'll, I'll hold it in my arm like this, I'll press the scanner, you'll see the laser, red laser, there, okay, so I'll have to scan it again, it's showing me invalid number, I have to do it a bit from far. Okay, so now it has scanned the cartridge. Okay, so this is the slot I mentioned earlier. We will open it from here. Okay, make sure to handle the cartridge carefully. Now I'll take it out. Okay, so it has to be like this. It has to be up, upside is like this. Okay, it should not be this other way around. It should be like this. So place this on a, on a flat surface like this. Okay, so this is a small well here. Here, this is a small well here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the blood here till this mark. I'm going to put the blood here all the way up to this mark. I have to discard a few ml of the, I'll discard a few ml of the blood because it is exposed to air. So that I have to discard. A few drops over there. Okay, now I'll be putting it in this well. Now I'll put it in this well. All the way till that mark. Okay. <coughs> now once I've done that, now I'll be closing this well. So I'll close this well like this. Okay. Now I'll be holding it in this fashion and inserting it in this slot over here. I'll be inserting in this slot. Okay. So now I'm doing that. So now it is reading. It will take at least uh, 120 seconds to read. So we'll just be waiting for that. So you should not remove the cartridge while it is reading. <coughs> so it takes a lot of time. So that is why these uh, handheld cartridge, they are not meant for um, huge volume. Uh, probably we can do it for one or two sick patients who are there in the hospital. Maybe you can run three, four, five samples. After that, the battery will be down. So you have to use the other battery. So best thing to do is you uh, keep on charging the other set of batteries while you are using it. So that when the bat after running four to five uh, samples, when the battery voltage is showing less than eight volt, you can use the other 
battery which you are charging simultaneously so you can uh, do that And uh, arterial blood means we have to take it either from the radial artery or from the femoral artery or from the dorsalis pedis artery. So you need to have a little bit of experience while taking arterial blood. So, but the easiest way to do it is from the femoral artery for beginners, for starters. Of course, it's a bit inconvenient for an awake patient to take. But uh, unconscious patient, uptunded patient, you can take it from the femoral artery. But awake patient and all, it's very inconvenient to take from the femoral artery. It's better to take from the radial artery. So now it's analyzing, so it's showing me the result here, okay, those values of pH, PCO2, PO2, base excess, bicarbonate 23, saturation 74, then this is the next button and press, okay, so it's showing me sodium 135, potassium 4.2, INS calcium 0.97, hematocrit showing 50, hemoglobin 16, I think something is uh, wrong with that with the recording because my sample also earlier was showing him a of 49 and hemoglobin 16 so i don't think my friend here uh, hobbin hobbin i don't think his hemoglobin will be this high <laughs> so uh, those are the values okay so we can copy this value you can just copy it down in a paper we'll be printing a we will be printing we will be printing on a, a format so we can just transfer this into that particular format patient details and everything okay so once you have entered that there then what you have to do is press one okay you have to press one after pressing one then it will tell you to remove cartridge so now you can remove the cartridge safely okay so now i'll go back to menu like say for some reason you are you want to retrieve the data so you can go to menu and you go to number two data review so press two and one patient okay then i'll skip this scan patient id I'll skip this by pressing enter so this is the last detail so we have not put any patient id or anything but what you can do is you can see from the timing at what time you have done what date so from there you can uh, you can uh, fairly uh, you know, uh, estimate like which patient you have taken the ABG sample from in case you have lost the the paper or you have lost the report so you can retrieve it in this way so you can just keep on going back 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 just keep on going this is page one <laughs> Okay, so that is the only detail. So, <coughs> okay, so now we can just switch it off when we are not in use. Okay, that's about it about the uh, demonstration of this machine.